This is MJ and in today's tutorial I'll be showing you how to make these cute little pot cozies. The circumference of the pot that I'm using for my cactuses is 8 inches and the height is about 3 inches. You can make yours plain like this or if you want to get a little fun for Easter you can turn it into a little bunny with some ears and a pom-pom on the back. This would make a cute little gift for your kids or a loved one that loves plants for Easter. And the pattern includes a little bit larger size as well if you have larger a larger pot that you wanna cover. Okay, so the yarn that I'm gonna be using for this pattern is Dishy provided by We Crochet. There'll be a link in the description box as to where you can purchase this yarn. It's one of my favorite cottons to use. I'm also using my Furl's Odyssey hook and I'm using a 3.75 millimeter or an F size hook. So here is the chart for our mosaic pattern we're going to be working. This is a great introduction to mosaic crochet and I'm going to explain everything to you here how our chart works. And this is a really simple two row repeat so it's really easy to remember. It's a great introduction piece to mosaic. Now working in the round, we're going to be working in multiples of four. So you can make your basket really as big as you want. You just need to work it in multiples of four. So if you decide you want bigger sizes than I've created, you can easily do that. No problem. So let's take a look at how to read the mosaic chart. So as you can see over here, I have my colors. So our first row is worked in A, this next row is in B, the next row is in A, the next row is in B. So we're using two colors and we're alternating every other row. Now as you can see, some of our boxes are blank, so they're just a square. And for every square you see, just completely ignore your color changes. That's just showing us what the pattern looks like. You will work a single crochet in the back loop only. Now for every X you see, you're gonna do a drop down double crochet. So every other row is worked in these colors here and then we're working single crochets in the back loop or a drop down double crochet, depending on what it tells you to do. So to get started with the pattern, I'm actually starting it with our color B. So the bottom here is worked in color B before we get into the mosaic pattern. So I'm going to begin with a magic ring. So wrap that around your index finger three times, slide your hook, and then you're grabbing your first loop, pulling it through, and then we're going to chain two. I'm going to work eight half double crochets in the ring. So now to make our ring tight, you're just gonna take your tail and start pulling it. Only one loop is gonna pull in. So the loop that's pulled in, you can just take it, pull, and then that will pull the other loop. Then just take your tail, pull. And then I'm going to slip stitch into the first single crochet to join. Chain one. Now in every stitch around, I'm gonna work two single crochet. So we're increasing from eight stitches to 16 stitches. Now 
Now I just like to double check that I do have 16 stitches and then I will slip stitch into the top single of the, the top of the single crochet, the first single crochet of the round. Chain one. And now our increase pattern will work like this. We'll work one single crochet in the first stitch and then we'll work two in the next. We'll work one in the next and then two in the next. And you can repeat that pattern all the way around. So we're increasing another eight stitches. So we're going from 16 to 24. Okay, so I've already slip stitched to join. We'll chain one and then our last increase pattern will work like this. One in the first, one in the next, and then two single crochet in the next. So one in the next, and one in the next, and then two in the next. And we'll repeat that all the way around. So we're increasing another eight stitches. So we'll be up to 32. Okay, so now we're gonna be bringing in color A. So I'm going to slip stitch to join. And I'm going to slip stitch through the back loop only. So I'm dropping off color B and I'm bringing in color A. And now I just wanna make sure I get those tails pulled nice and tight. Chain one. So now we're gonna work in the back loop of every stitch around. Single crochet in the back loop only. And if we look now at our mosaic chart, this is actually the first round that we are working, okay? And it's all in the white in the back loop. And just double check that you have your 32 stitches so that your pattern is gonna work out correctly. Okay, so I've worked around 32 stitches and now we'll slip stitch again in the back loop only, the first stitch. Now what I like to do is keep color A to one side, color B to the other side so we don't get twisted. So pull that through, make sure to pull that white yarn nice and tight. We want the join to be really tight chain one and now for row two this is actually a mis mistake that that x is there i need to fix that so for row two you just want to ignore the different color changes all you're doing they're all boxes without an x so we're working across single crochets in the back loop only so don't just completely ignore the color changes. We're just looking to see whether we have an empty box or a box with an X. So for round two, we're just working one single crochet in the back loop of every stitch around. Now one thing I like to do, just to kind of get this out of the way, is just deal with these tails. The tails that we are not using, we might as well just get them trimmed and out of the way so we're not grabbing at the wrong tail when we're changing color. So I'm just gonna do this really quickly. Find that white tail. I'm 
Okay, so that'll just keep things easier when we're picking up the yarn. Okay, so we'll change color when we slip stitch. You're slip stitching into the first single crochet. We're picking up color A, pulling it through. And chain one. Okay, so now for round three, we're gonna start having some X's. So we will be doing some drop down double crochets. So for every box without an X, we're doing a single crochet in the back loop. And then when we get to an X, we do a drop down. And you can see our pattern will repeat itself. So it makes it really easy to work around. So we'll do a drop down, three singles in the back loop, a drop down, three singles in the back loop, etc. So it makes it really simple to not have to keep referring to the chart. So I'm beginning with a single in the first and a single in the back loop of the next. Okay, so you can see here, two stitches. Then I'm doing a drop down. So here is, here's the first two loops. Here is the next front loop. So we're gonna yarn over we're going to go down so we're going down two rows below this is one row below this is two rows below and we're doing a double crochet in that front loop only then we're going to work a single in the back loop of the next three One, two, three, and then in the next, we're going down and doing another drop down double crochet. Then three, one, two, three, and then a drop down. And just keep repeating that all the way around. So I'm coming around to the end. I have two stitches left, so I'm doing a drop down. And then I'm ending with one single crochet in the back loop. So we started with two, we end with one. So that gives us three stitches also between these two drop downs. Now we'll slip stitch in the back loop of the first single crochet. Pull that tight and you can see I'm keeping my white to this side, keeping my gray to this side. You really want to make sure those are tight so that you don't see the join. Chain one. And now we're looking at round four. So now if I was working this flat, this is where things differ. If I was working this flat, I wouldn't be doing a drop down, but because I'm working in the round, I want my pattern to look consistent all the way. So I'm going to do a drop down in the very first stitch. It's kind of hard. It's kind of hard to work into that one when we're first starting out. You can see that little front loop right there. It's a little tight, but that's what we need to work into. So there's our drop down. Then I'm doing three. One, two, three. And then my next drop down is gonna be in the center of these three loops. Once we get these first two rows established, it does make the first few rounds established it makes it easier going forward now we'll work three in the next and then a drop down in the center again single crochet in the back loop of the next three and I'm just going to repeat that all the way around Okay, and then when you get all the way around, you're ending with three. 
So that again puts three in between our two drop downs. Slip stitch in the top of the drop down DC to join. Keeping our gray to that side. Tighten up that join. Chain one. And now we're on to round five, which is a repeat of round three. So we start out with two singles in the back loop only. We're always go going in the back loop. And then we're now stacking our drop down double so it makes it easier. We're just working into the front loop of that drop down double. And then one in each of the next three. And then a drop down stacked on top of this drop down. So now each round is going to be much easier just because you have that visual you know where you're putting your stitch so I'm just going to repeat that all the way around and once we're all the way around we're doing we're ending with one and then we're slip stitching in that first single back loop to join. And I'll go through this round with you as well, even though it's just a repeat. So six is a repeat of four. So we're dropping down now in that first drop down. And then we're working three And then our drop down is going to be stacked over this drop down. And then we do three. I chose this pattern to show you as an introduction to the mosaic because it's so simple, it's easy to remember, and it just gets you familiar with how to do mosaic. The patterns can get a lot more complicated, a lot more intricate, but we're, you follow the same system. You're just looking at your X's and your blank boxes to see what you do. And you can make some beautiful designs. And I have several coming up for you on my channel. There'll be links in the description box once they're available. And I also show you in another video how to work this pattern flat. And there'll be a link for that as well. So three in between the drop downs. And I'm just gonna repeat that all the way around. Okay, so I've worked up 11 rounds and I'm just gonna cut my weight at this point because we don't need it anymore. And I've already changed to gray. What I'm gonna do with color B now is I'm just gonna work a single crochet in the back loop of every stitch around. Then this is optional, but I love the look of adding some of the twine through the stitch. So I'm gonna show you how to do that as well. But for this round, we're just gonna work a single crochet in the back loop of every stitch around. And you could finish off at this point if you don't want to add the twine. Okay, so now we'll slip stitch. And I'm going to go through both loops at this point. Slip stitch to join. And I'm going to chain one. Now, in the stitch that I've slip stitched to, we're going to take the twine and push it through. So you just need to push it through or use your hook to help pull it through. So you just want a nice long piece left for tying. Just keep it nice and long. 
Okay, so we're gonna single crochet in the same stitch as we slip stitched, okay? And we're just going under the twine. So we're kind of giving it a little bit more security there. Now I'm gonna chain one and I'm gonna skip the next stitch and single crochet in the next. Chain one. You just hold the twine around as you go, skip the next stitch and single crochet in the next. And then just the chain one and skipping is gonna allow a little bit of the twine to peek through. So this is all we're doing all the way around. Okay, so I'm coming to the end. You should have one more stitch and we're just gonna single crochet into that stitch. You could just chain and slip stitch, but I just want this area to be nice and secure. So I'm gonna slip stitch in the first single crochet to join. And you wanna make sure to pull that, that it's stretched out, not too tight, so that it will go over your pot. And then you can just weave in your ends. You can trim this. So I'm just gonna weave those ends in and then I'll meet you up again. Okay, so I finished and I just sat my pot in there because you can tighten up this to snug into your pot. Just tie a bow and you can trim the ends shorter if you want to. Okay, and then if you wanna turn it into a bunny, you can just add a little pom-pom to the back and I'm gonna have a video just to show how to make um, the pom-pom with one of the tiny pom-pom makers. So I'll have a video link for that if you wanna take a look at that, but I'll show you how to make the ears just if you wanna add those. Okay, so to make the ear, we're gonna to hold together two strands. We're still using our F hook. We're gonna chain up seven Work a single crochet in the second chain from the hook. Single crochet in the next. And a single crochet in the next. Then we'll work a half double crochet in the next. And a half double crochet into the next. And then we'll work two in the final stitch. And now we're gonna turn so that we're working to the opposite side of the chain, working down this way. So in the same stitch, we're gonna add two more and that's gonna count as the first chain on this side. And pulling that tail just pulls that all in tight. Then we're gonna work a half double crochet in the next stitch, half double crochet in the next, and then singles into the last three. One, two, three. And then we'll just fasten that off. Pull that through and then that gives you two tails that you can use to tie. I'm just gonna weave that down so that it's down at the bottom. And then you'll have these to tie on to the basket. So just repeat that and make your second ear. Okay, so you can just fold your basket so that the bow is 
centered on this side. And you're just going to want to attach your ears. You can use your tails. I just like using the tails here to attach them. Okay, so take that tail and just go, I've gone through the center that stitch and then I'm going to go under this stitch so we have something to knot. Then take the other ear. go through the next stitch and then the center will go through the same stitch as the first one. But I mean, you can attach these however you want. This is just the way I've done it. You could knot these in trim, but if you want your bunny ears removable, I just suggest tying it in a bow so that you can undo it maybe after Easter. If you don't want the ears on there anymore, you can just take them off. So I just suggest doing a bow trim those ends up a bit. You can give them a little curve. And there is your little ears attached to your cactus. Okay, so now to attach my pom-pom, I'm just gonna put the yarn tails on my needle and just underneath the bow, I'm gonna go and I'm gonna put one strand through going to grab the other piece and I'm going to poke it through so there's about a stitch between them and then you can just tie it. You can do the same thing that we did with the ears if you want that it's removable just tie it in a bow so that it can be removed if, want, if you want to just have it decorative after Easter as well. Trim that. And then if you're using cactuses, just be sure not to prick yourself. I think I've pricked myself a few times with these little guys. So there it is all finished. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel and tap the bell to stay updated on new videos and tutorials. Thanks so much everyone. Have an awesome day.